Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki with my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., of course, University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. This week, the home opener for the University of Miami at Hard Rock Stadium, 7 o'clock kickoff against Appalachian State, and it will be great to see fans in the stands at Hard Rock Stadium. We'll talk about that momentarily. Coach, uh, first we look back at last week's game, Alabama. I thought your team played hard, thought the effort was there. Sometimes the execution was a bit, uh, bit, uh, a little bit off. Yeah, we, uh, our guys did play hard. We competed to the end, but, um, but to, to compete against a team like Alabama and, and their level of play, we were gonna have to really be on point. And um, they beat us in all the critical moments, really the, 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 the pathway that we saw towards victory. Um, we had to possess the ball on offense, get tempo going. Um, to eventually wear down their defense because those guys are hard to block. That, that's, that'll be as good of a defense as there is in America this year. There won't be anybody better. There might be one as good. Um, and the way to do that was we had to keep their offense off the field. We got them in a third down. Um, that depended a lot on how we played run defense. And actually, I was, you know, from where we were a year ago, I was, um, I was pleased with how we defended the run, the, their, their stretch and counter. Uh, we, we look better versus the run that we did last year. We're still not there yet. We, we, our, our guys we, in film study, we showed them how much even better we could be. Um, uh, but to get, to get them in 14 third down and five or more, is if you would have you know, offered me that before the game, I'd have, I'd have ripped your hand off, shaken it. Um, and we lost 10 of the 14. And that, and that to me is a game. They, they, their, their quarterback made the plays, made uh, better calls than I made on stopping the third down. We, we showed them Clemson, Alabama, Deshaun Watson, Clemson's first national championship under Dabo. Clemson gained 12 yards on the first play of the game. They didn't gain double-digit yards against Alabama's defense until the 33rd play of the game. And by that point, it was 14 to nothing Alabama. They won the game on the 103rd play of offense. And Bama ran 70 plays, Clemson ran 103. And that's usually been the formula people have had to beat them. And that was what we had to do. We ended up going the opposite. We allowed them to control the game in the first half. They stayed on the field. Uh, of course, those drives turned into scoring drives, and, and then by the time we really got our rhythm on offense, the scoreboard was out of, already, out, already out of hand. Man, I want to go back and revisit the run defense. I think it was 3.8 yards per carry, one back at 60 yards, everybody else below that. I think coming into that ball game, or let's go back to, to historic numbers for Alabama. That's a rare occurrence that they were held to that kind of yards per carry and total number. Yeah, I think Georgia had them, I think, 43 for 147 last year. We were right around that same deal, and everybody mm -hmm. knows Georgia's got a great front. So, again, where we were a year ago, um, that's an improvement. Uh, and why do you play great run defense? That gives you the ability to play, put them in, in long yard situations. We also had double-digit tackle for losses, which you don't probably get very often versus Alabama. Um, so, but that... It, it adds to the disappointment of letting him off the hook. But, but in the foundation going forward of what it takes to play a great defense, uh, we know we were substandard in what, how we defended the run a year ago. So there is some, there is some positive to take away. Um, now the question is, will our guys work this week to not be satisfied, to even recognize, yeah, okay, we can do some good things. Let's take this whole thing to a different level. The, the, you know, everybody thought going in, outside, oh, Alabama's got all these new players in offense. The curse of that is with those new players in office, including the quarterback, is there's not a lot of evidence of what they can do. And I thought your strategy was the right one. Let's see if he can make some plays. You were able to really shoot through gaps and, and get some pressure on him. To his yeah. credit, he made some plays. He, ma he made plays, and he also made plays of, of avoiding disasters. You know, there was one time Flag had him in the backfield and he, on, a, on, a, on a bootleg, and he was able to throw the ball to a tight, you know, at the feet of a tight end that wasn't grounding. Of course, there was a one in the safety. I mean, that was a. For a young guy, that's a special play to avoid a safety. I mean, we had him dead to rights in the end zone. There were three or four other times where we had him sacked, and 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 and, uh, and he got out of there just to throw it away. Um, but the plays he made in his accuracy um, off platform, I thought was a difference. Normally, when you get young guys off the spot, they kind of go crazy and and they can throw it to you. And not just did he make the right decision, but he was very accurate with it. And that's you know you got you got to tip your hat to to a guy making plays like that. To that being said, we can still rush better and we can cover better to make it harder on him or anybody else we play this year. Manny Dierick King on Saturday, eight months to the day when he had injured his knee, goes into the ball game, uh, got banged around a little bit, but threw the ball well, looked like he was way ahead of schedule of what anybody else would have been with that kind of injury. Your overall assessment of, of how he played in the game. Yeah, I thought Dierick was courageous. Um, 
you know, Alabama was sending all kinds of pressures and stunts and movements, you know, every time we dropped back to throw the ball and it's a handful for the offensive line to pick up. Um, our offensive line got better as the game went on, sort of settled down and um, we're able to, those defensive ends, you won't find two better looking and playing defensive ends anywhere in the country. So they've got great equipment. Um, like I said, that, that's as good of a team as I've seen in the six years I've been in Miami. So for Derek to that be your first game back in and, and stand in on that rush and make some of the throws he made, um, I, I, like I said, the word, the word to me is courageous. Along those lines, Coach, uh, you talked a little bit about uh, possessing the ball, and that was important. That was one of the reasons I think you tried to establish a run game early on against Alabama. Yeah, well, that, that was some of the – we did, and, and, and like they did to us, we had some RPOs attached to the run game. And, and I think one of the um, disappointments for us is that we didn't always make the proper decision on the runs and the RPOs. Some of the runs that you saw early on that didn't go for very much, um, you know, the ball should have been spit out to the outside, which they did to us, you know, at times we were able to get some good yards and, you know, those type of things. If you, if you, if on first and second down, you got to run with an RPO and you hand it off when you had really good throw looks, it's going to be third and 10. That's really hard against their defense. We had, we, I think our first run of the game, we ripped them for about six up the middle because they covered the RPO, but that left them light in the box. And that's just, that's the chess match that is college ball every time there's a running play called um, in this day and age. Coach Mike Harley came out of the ball game. Give us a little update on him, but then you got Restrepo and Rambo and Smith. Well, those young men played a, a very good football game and not many drops. I mean, we were plagued yeah. by drops last year and almost non existent in this ball game. Yeah, you know, obviously we, we hated to lose Mike, but, you know, hopefully the, the, the prognosis is good about getting him back for this week. But, uh, you know, we knew that going this year to be the offense we want to be, that, that taking a step forward at the wide receiver position would be key to that, right? And, uh, I did. I, I thought a lot of the guys, you know, you know, made r tough catches. You know, we'll talk more about that later. But that had been a that had kind of been a point of emphasis all year is you know make the tough catches. We only had one drop on the day, and, and now Restrepo, who's you know you're almost surprised to see him drop one, but he made up for it by making a spectacular catch in the end zone. That he, to be honest, every time we scrimmage, the guy's been out there. He makes that play every single time. So when the ball was in the air and I saw him in the position with the DB, I said. I know how this is going to end. It's going to be a touchdown for Miami because I've seen him do it so many times. That was a heck of a catch, though, also. I mean, there, there was you, – you, you're well aware of how to cover those guys and, and he, the way he kept focused on that football. That's my point. I, I, in practice, I've been rooting against him as a defense coordinator. <laughs> so I, when the ball was in the air, I knew, I knew it was getting ready to happen. We should probably also uh, find other, some other perspective in this as well as we, look, uh, as we were able to see some of your young players. Alabama has done this for a lot of teams. It's also Nick Saban's 15th year there, building his roster, which is a very deep roster filled with players from all over the country. This is the third year of you trying to build a championship roster. And we're starting to see some of those young players get integrated into your roster. Yeah, well, that's the part that's so disappointing. That's, and, I, and I hate to keep, keep up on the third downs. I mean, obviously, look, they were, they were better than us. You have to hold your hands up and acknowledge that. But, um, I mean, we, we get him in third and long to start the game. You know, and if we can, you know, Mari Carter knocks the running back over on his way in the blitz right in the quarterback's face. He does leave the ball. It's not one of his more accurate throws. It's a comeback. He leaves the ball on the high side of the receiver. And we got a chance to get a PBU right there if we just play with a little bit better technique. And, man, the, the energy in the sideline to get a three and out to start. There's so many plays like that that, you know, where – you really could have gotten off, you know, and, and so what, what are t end up being touchdown drives could be three and outs or, or, or quick stops, get the ball back for the offense. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, what the film provides is a great opportunity for, for us to learn, you know, for as coaches to learn, you know, but for the players to learn, you know, I mean, you've got to be on point with your technique when you play against those guys, you know, because um, if you're not where you're supposed to be, they're going to punish you because of their talent. And, uh, but uh, that's going to only help us going forward. Coach, you have Bubba Bolden out for a uh, targeting penalty. He, he goes to the bench. Cam Kitchens comes in. Williams comes in. Two very young guys to be put in a situation. Now, that's great for the future, but they seemed it, it wasn't too big for them. Yeah, that's always what you're wondering. Um, you know, Cam made some like, – Cam forced a fumble. That was another weird play that we somehow lost a fumble on review. Um, seemed like all those kind of weird things went against us. But uh, Cam went in there. You know, he did well. Um, you know, and then James was able to go in there and, 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 and James's energy and it, he looked right at home in that environment because uh, you never know, right? Until you put him in there, you really, you never really know. And now, of course, there's little technique things that, you know, alignments and, you know, eyes and things like that, they got it cleaned up, but they, but they ran hard, they tackled well. Um, I think both those guys have a big future for us. 
uh, we should mention there are a lot of things that, that you can play for here, and we'll get to that in a moment. I thought uh, a key swing in the game also, the third quarter. You know, took the second half kickoff and marched down the field. Can you take us through the sequence between uh, they repel you at the goal line and then turn that into the long pass? Yeah, it was – It was. Uh, that was a critical situation in the second half, uh, really a 14-point swing. You know, you, 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 we, we rip off the long run. It's about third and six or seven or so. We, we, uh, Cheney gets down to the end zone. It's a little bit hard to tell whether he's in or not, right? And we knew we were going to go for it. That's why we ran on third down. We knew we were going to go for it. So, um, so we've got the sneak play called. And, you know, part of being a tempo offense, you got to get the ball spotted. And they're slow spotting the ball. And then, and then you know, the umpire's trying to get out of the way. And then center judge, he kind of jumps in. And Derek kind of turns and looks at him. And, you know, in all that time, Alabama's getting ready. You know, I mean, the whole point is you're going to try to sort of surprise them, A, on the fourth down decision to go, and then B, on getting a lineup quickly in a formation we hadn't been in and snap the ball. And, um now, I'll say i got to give them credit. They had, they had some guys that outcompeted some of our guys in terms of the way that they played and the way we blocked those guys, um, where Derek didn't have a chance to, to, to get over the top of the pile and, and, and get the ball in the end zone. So you turn it around, you give the ball to one yard, and that's kind of an emotional, you know, you know, you know kick in the gut, right? Um, you know, you, you get them in a third down right off, right off. Well, the first down they run it, second down they go to throw it, and you, you think you got a safety. Right. And – Looking back, you know, one of the regrets I have in the game, I probably should have called timeout after that because I think everybody, those two emotional moments, the, the, the getting stopped on the goal line and then the, you know, feeling aggrieved of, of not getting the safety and not a great explanation why, I, I, I just felt like we were all probably a little bit, you know, not on our game. We go man coverage on third down and they fake across the route. The guy comes back across. Now I'll tell you. When you talk about their new personnel, the wide receiver transfer, the, the Williams kid from Ohio State, mm -hmm. he changed them. I and mean, the guy runs 10-5, and, you know, Gervin Hall could fly. He was our deep middle safety on that. And for Gervin to not even get him on the ground, that, that's, that's a, that, that, that was different. But that, that sequence right there, obviously, you know, that was hard on, on our players, you know, because right. right there you feel like you got a, a chance to get a score, um, and you give them a score, and, and that's, uh, that was difficult to take. Coach, let's go back to Donald Chaney and not a lot of yards, not a ton of carries, but I saw a lot of hope. But what a powerful guy. I mean, you know, he, yeah. he's, he just, he's hard to bring down and he understands what his role is and, and he doesn't mind dipping in there in between the tackles. Well, I think that's what the key with Don is that Don just does a good job of just, of just trusting his blocking and sticking it in there. You know, you, 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 when you play any front, for sure a front like Alabama's, um, you can't dance, right? Because the blocks, if the blocks are made, they're not going to be helpful very long, you know, the way that they play. And, and, and Don did, you know, he, he rammed it in there, uh, ran hard. Um, you know, we've, we've obviously, he's been in and out of the lineup in the summertime and training camp and stuff. So it was just good to have him available. And, and I look forward to seeing him run more and more as, as these weeks come up. All right, this week, the home opener. I know you're excited about that. App State comes to town. I think the players will be excited as well. And a lot of things still on the table for the University of Miami. In fact, the entire season, all the goals are still there. We'll talk about that with Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz right after this. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are gonna show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover too. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Happy to welcome you back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. And uh, the poet doesn't write a story just one time. So a long way to go in the season, coach. And uh, a lot of things, a lot of chapters still to go and a lot of goals out there that can be achieved. Oh, that's absolutely right. Well, first, we have three non-conference games all at home, uh, which I think will be huge for us, you know, to, to get on a roll, get on track before we get into the league. Um, you got a league schedule. You got an ACC Coastal Division that's that has been um, hard to get 
at the school, right? I mean, that's still the goal is to get to Charlotte in December. Uh, that's that's been something we talk about all off season. You know, I, I think about this time last year. You know, early last season, Texas A&M played Alabama. Alabama beat them by 30 points. Right. And by the end of the year, A&M was the first team left out in the playoff. So um, it's all there to play for. You know what I mean? If this team does what Texas A&M, to use them as an example a year ago, what, what they did, which they just got better week in, week out, from that point on, uh, they remember November. You know, and I think that's important. We want to be playing our best ball uh, in November. And, and these games, these three games at home, give us a chance to, to, uh, to get on track. Coach, one thing I noticed about this team is they gave you, our team, the Miami Hurricanes, gave you 60 minutes. Yeah. They, they really did, and, and I can't say that that's always been the fact um, every single game over the last 20-some-odd years, but they gave you 60 full minutes every single one of them. Yeah, and the sideline was good. I mean, if you just watch, if you watch Alabama, and I've been in these games before, you know, in the fourth quarter where they're just going to put you in a headlock and just, you know, <laughs> um, they're going to run the ball and just, you know, get after you and, um, the way our guys were, 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 you know, spiking through gaps, making plays in the backfield, you know, fourth down stops, third down stops in those situations, just playing with the physicality, you know, that, that, it, that, that to me meant that they wanted to play for each other. That's what it's all about, right. uh, the bond between the team. And, and uh, um, I think that's something really to build on. With that bond, how important is it that you do have a good locker room? Well, it's humongous, but that's the whole point of this team coming back. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the point of our veteran leadership. Um, you know, these teams are always different, you know, and it's, it's easy to say, well, this one thing happened in the past, therefore it will happen again. It's, it's different. This is a different locker room. Um, you know, you could see it by the way that, that the guys came back into the building on Sunday. Yeah, they're hurt. We're all hurt. Um, but but you, don't, you don't throw it away for, for one bad day. Uh, there, there's too much work that's been done with these guys. Uh, they're too close to their goals are in – and what they want to see of this team is all still attainable, and they're going to do what it takes to achieve it. Man, they got a lot to play for. If, if anybody was at the game and you did the, the cane walk into the stadium and you, and you saw all those Hurricane fans there, and then we run out onto the field and the support that you have, I, I got to applaud all the people that came to that game and all the people that supported this group of young men because they were there in full force. Yeah, the, the cane walk was very emotional. Wasn't it? For our guys. And, you yeah. know, when we came inside the stadium afterwards, you know, some guys, I was like, well, that, now you know what it's like to be a Miami Hurricane, yeah. you know, and, and, but that was still kind of the appetizer. I mean, really coming home now and seeing Hard Rock and, you know, if we have a cane walk at Hard Rock and, and just coming out in the stadium and, and the whole deal, it's just, you know, I want those guys to feel what that's like. I want them to feel our own support. I want them to see the, the West End Zone crowd in there. You know, I mean, I just want them to see all the fans and, and um, that's what college ball is all about. I think that's what we saw the first weekend all over the country, you know, without the fans, um, it's just an exhibition. It's just, you know what I mean? The fans make, make the sport, and, and, uh, and we can't wait to be in front of ours. Well, that gets us to the game this Saturday. It's a night game, 7 o'clock game, perfect for Hurricanes and Hurricane fans, and a very worthy opponent. This is a team, App State, they've won 65, 66 games since 2015. They've had nine-plus wins in six straight years. So they've kind of built a winning culture with their program. Yeah, they, uh, they expect to win. Uh, and you can see that they, it doesn't matter who the head coach has been. It's almost a, it's almost baked into the culture um, in that school. Um, they're going to play with uh, with great toughness. You know, they, they they've always find uh, um, five tough offensive linemen that are very athletic. Uh, they can run that outside zone, and they're going to get after you. I mean, from start to finish, um, they can find a good back to run behind those guys, and then they've got uh, really talented wideouts. I think what's very unusual this year, all around college ball, like with us. You know, we've got our little back batch of super seniors. They have 14 super seniors. Uh, they're a very, very old team. Uh, it's basically last year's team back in its entirety minus a couple guys, very similar to us. So you got a team that's won conference championships. They, they've, they've been in big settings. You know, this team two years ago beat North Carolina and South Carolina. Um, all these guys that will play on Saturday, they were all a part of those teams that won those games. So they will uh, – they will not be intimidated to come into Hard Rock, and they won't be intimidated to see us line up across from them. Coach, their quarterback, Chase Bryce, spent three years at Clemson. We faced him last year at Duke, and he does not look like the same guy that I saw last year. Very efficient against uh, East Carolina. Looked very comfortable. They moved him around well. And this offense, as you mentioned, looks like it just is suited for him. Yeah, it is because you're going to get favorable looks to throw the football because everything is off the run game. You know, mm-hmm. it's run, 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 and then – 
you know, run, 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 run a, a naked play action pass, run a run, you know, throw a shot. Um, and they get into, a, you know, as we talk about the Bama game, they get into a lot of manageable third downs because, of, you know, they, they almost have a option mentality uh, in the way that they, they go about the game, you know, and how they want to control it. So, uh, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Duke kind of got caught by the turnover bug a year ago, and they did a better job protecting it in game one here. So um, we know they got an experienced guy that's been around and, and seen a lot of things. You know, they, you mentioned their, their run game, uh, the four receivers – the past game have combined for 500 catches and 58 touchdowns. But that run game is the same run game pretty much you saw at Louisville because right. their head coach was attached to Scott Satterfield. He was their offensive line coach, right? And it's the same, pretty much the same style you saw when we went up to Boone a couple years ago. That's right, yeah. It, it's that outside zone, and it's a, um, it's a difficult play because it's very hard to replicate it the way that they run it in practice, you know. Um, even if your offensive line runs outside zone, you don't quite run it the way they do it. They're a little unique in how they do it. You can't get a scout team to do it because your defensive line will just blow through the scout team. Um, so it's, you know, what we have found, whether we went to Boone a couple years ago or the last two trips or the last two games against Louisville, it's a play that you sometimes play better as the game goes on because as the defensive linemen get a feel uh, for the blocks and how it's occurring. The linebackers get a feel for the reads and how it's occurring. We played it better in 19 than we did in 20 last year, but that was one of our issues a year ago, we did play the outside zone play better against Alabama. Doesn't mean we'll play it better against App State, but but that was one of the encouraging signs I saw last week against really really good personnel and an NFL type offensive line because uh, Bama tried to run outside zone on us a bunch of times. So um, that'll be a great challenge because if you stop it once, you're going to get it again and again and again. You better be in the mood to uh, to play some run blocks and a tackle. I mean, this roster of App State is full of South Florida guys, but they also got a lot of portal guys that came in to to stack their numbers. But there's speed on this team, and as you mentioned, they really haven't changed a whole lot. It's been a systematic process for for years there. Yeah, what, what, what stood out to me watching the film from their opener was their defense. Um, very active out of a 3-4 front. Um, Every play, they're blitzing and stunting, so they're going to be a little bit smaller, certainly than what we saw last week. But uh, where last week they were, you know, more stout and just going to try to, you know, arm rusty to death. These guys are, are are flying around, moving in every different direction, blitzing this guy, blitzing that guy, changing covers behind it. So it is a, it's a game that where you have to not only physically be on point, but mentally to be on point because, you know, if you bust a blocking assignment, there will be a free linebacker running through on a run or a pass that can. You know, get you in a negative play and kill the drive. You know, and you only get 11 to 12, 13 of those a game. So uh, a play like that takes away one of your 12 opportunities to score. They they also count on being kleptomaniacs. They they intercept the ball all the time. They're number three in the nation a year ago in interceptions. They've had over a hundred over the last five, six, seven years. Yeah, and I think last year I think they kept people to under 50 percent completion percentage. So I mean, this is a, this is a good football team. I mean, they're stout. They they're aggressive on defense. Um, they attack. It's, it will be very important for us to create explosive plays against them because they're a difficult team to drive the ball against because they're just so they're just they're just changing their stress points constantly. And their base odd front. It seems like they spend most of their time with three down guys and like you mentioned, just bringing people from every direction. Yeah, I think they feel they have you know they're, because they are smaller. You know they can't just stand there and, and hold point on you. So they're going to move and and the whole idea of movement is they're going to try to make offensive, they're going to try to make you mentally unsure, mm. you know, make you play slower up front uh, because you're more worried about what they're going to do instead of how to do what you're going to do. And, and that's the advantage, you know. And, um, but if you, if you get on the right guys, you can also create seams and, and increase them in that way. And, um, and that's why I say when the opportunity is there to, to get an explosive play through the run in the pass, we've got to take it. You know, we got beat by 140 yards explosively against Alabama. We saw how important the big plays were in that game in terms of tilting it to their favor. Um, we need to be able to do the same thing to App State on Saturday. I thought there were a couple of guys also uh, that are going into this game, in the last game, new to the program, that I thought accounted themselves pretty well. Ola was shown, came in, at right tackle, and uh, I thought Rambo looked like a natural uh, in a big game. Yeah, I, I agree with both of those assessments. Um, Bama, Bama's front, you know, I mean, those guys were problems. And Justice came in, and just the way he competed, um, it's, it's like there was a problem, and then all of a sudden, he, like, he came in with, like, the fireman with the hose and, and put the fire out. And really, from that point forward, we were able to function much better offensively. Um, and we felt that going in. Look, we have more depth on offense. Um, and that doesn't mean that Scaife and Williams and those guys won't also factor us, factor in for us down the road with different roles. Um, but we got some guys that we can, you know, go in there if somebody's not, you know, having the right day. And, um, and then we talk about, you know, you mentioned Rambo and, 
we felt that we would be a step above where we were at wide receiver a year ago because we brought all the guys back, our younger guys, more experienced, and then bringing a guy like Rambo, which that's exactly why he was brought in um, to help us make plays in games like that. Coach Borregalis, Andy Borregalis comes in, scores points, is effective. And while that was going on, I'm thinking to myself, this is the best education this young man can have that's going to last him really through his whole kicking career to be in that situation where he's got to make the kicks that he did. And then, of course, our punter uh, showed why he's one of the best in the country. Yeah, you want to talk about, you know, the mentality of, of Andres Borregalis. I mean, the opening kickoff, we, we defer to working <laughs> off. I mean, you've seen a guy kind of shank that time, you know, I mean, I mean, the ball hits the back of the line of the end zone. It wasn't just a touchback. It was, he knocked it through the back of the end zone. And then we had that sequence before halftime, five seconds. We had a timeout. Could have kicked there, but said, you know what? Let's practice our centering the ball play. You know, we might need that in a game later in the year. We got the ball centered for him, so he can go out there and knock it through. We, of course, we converted one later. So for him to go two and two and make his, you know, PAT, uh, what a great start to his career on that stage. I know we're going to dive in uh, deeper on your linebackers, but Keontre played, Keontre Smith played linebacker for the first time. Showed up like the third play of the game. I thought, there were some times where he and Flag really flashed. Yeah, you notice them. I, I think that's the biggest key. You notice them, they pop on the field. Um, and that's what we talked about a week ago. We just we feel like we're faster on defense. Um, so you'll, you'll, you see that suddenness. Um, I thought they did a nice job in their run fits um, and, and, and made some plays in, in some critical situations. So uh, a lot of confidence with those guys. But the, the best thing to me is that in our front seven, uh, we played – you know, eight, eight, eight guys up front and six guys at the linebacker level that all played, I think, 20, around 21 snaps or more. Um, and that's what it's going to take. You know, it's going to take us, you know, keeping guys fresh so our fast guys can be fast and not get worn down. Um, and the way we're able to roll through the front guys in front of them, I think, is what helped the linebackers. Again, like I mentioned, the linebackers in the front are, are always tied together, and I thought our front played a better game, and I think the backers benefited because of that. Coach to Corey Couch again, you know, just kind of an unsung hero every single week. A tough guy that doesn't back down in any situation. Yeah, the word is competitor. Yeah. And it, it, it has not mattered who the opponent's been and what the situation. I mean, TC's got great self-belief. Um, and, and, and that's it, man. He believes he can win any fight. And, and boy, when you're back there playing DB, sometimes back there one-on-one, -on -one, you, you got to have that belief in yourself. And uh, I think it's one of his great skills. All right, well... Got a good one coming up on Saturday, at State, 7 o'clock, home opener. Looking for a great crowd and great effort as well. Saturday night at the Hard Rock, man. It's, it's, it's been a long time coming. I can't wait. That's right. All right, we will continue on the show right after this. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. Hello, I'm the Good Greek Spiro, and I have some very exciting news. Good Greek Moving and Storage is launching our Welcome Home program. Book your next move with Good Greek, and you will receive our housewarming package, which includes gift cards valued at over $1,000, along with a neighborhood guide as you discover your new favorite local businesses. For the best move ever, and to receive your exclusive gift offer, visit goodgreek.com and welcome home. Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. The Breakdown is brought to you by University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute. Experts treat athletes of all levels, elite pros, active adults, and youth athletes. Recover your game. Visit ULSportsMedicine.com. It's time for the Breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, what do you have for us today? I want to uh, spotlight two parts of our football team that, I, that we made a big deal to try to really take a step from where we were a year ago. And that was uh, wide receiver mm -hmm. and linebacker. And we felt just through the development of our program, um, you know, guys getting older, guys getting more experienced, and then bringing some other guys in from, from the outside, we had a chance to really improve in both spots, and we thought that would improve our offense and our defense. And I think um, despite the loss on Saturday, I thought there was some evidence from Saturday um, of some really good plays that I just want to spotlight and things that I think give us encouragement going forward. And we'll start on the offense side of the ball. Made a big deal all training camp really all offseason about making tough contested catches in tight windows. This is a big point in the game. This is right before halftime. It's fourth down and 10. There's only 20 seconds left in the game, so, so in the half, so we're going to go ahead and go for it. But when you see right here, look at this window. It's a great throw by Derek. But when you look at this window, and that's Keyshawn Smith, and that, I don't want you to point out the catch, but see how his hands come away from his body? Guys usually want to let that ball get to their body. 
big time catch, you're in traffic, you probably think you're about to get popped. And for him to make that play and then still get north right there, can secure the ball in front of all the guys trying to get it out, that's a big time play. Coach, also, we'll go back to Dierick. He had a throwing lane, but also, as you mentioned, Smith was surrounded. I mean, that, that was, that was a, an excellent throw, and that pass probably was completed 100 times in practice, right? That had that's, a lot to do with timing with those that's two right. guys. Well, as you mentioned, I mean, look at the offensive line. And that, this is, you know, we talk about justice over here. And look, look at the fight. I mean, that's, that's as good as there is anywhere in the country as a pass rusher. And Derek right there, great time. Boom, puts it on the way. Look, at, look, at, look, look how Keyshawn just snags that ball out of the air and secures it. Because if he doesn't secure it, five's going to rip it out right there. That's a really special play. Uh, gives him, Keyshawn, a lot of confidence going forward. And then um, this is another um, tough catch. You know, so down, we mentioned Charleston Rambo down here at the bottom. you got to beat press coverage, right? Um, bang, receiver, DB puts hands on him, gets a little bit of a separation. And, again, this don't seem like much on first down and 10, but against these great defenses, going forward is so crucial. Makes the catch, bang, they get same thing. They try to get it out. Doesn't seem like much, man, but those are big, tough plays against the Alabama defense. Manny, they went after the ball as much as anybody I've ever seen after the catch. No, and, there's no and doubt. Rem- and you, that's why you've got to secure it right away, and you know inside you're probably going to take a hit. And then the, the third play, you know, for showing the wide receivers, and, the, you know, this is the one everybody remembers. So same thing, you know, we're, we're going fast, and you see them just kind of struggling to get lined up. Um, and here comes the deep ball. And this is the play we just talked about seeing, seeing in practice. Um, Couple couple of details here that really matter though. Okay, so that's Xavier Restrepo. But see how Restrepo? I don't know if you can see on the on the field. You've got, you got those uh, oops, over here. See those ticks on the field right there? Those are the those are the college numbers. We're in the NFL stadium, so these numbers here over here those are the NFL numbers. But these these numbers right here those are the college numbers. By him holding onto those college numbers, Derek has all this grass out here to throw him open that the DB can't get. So watch where the ball goes and see how Restrepo, late hands, I mean, Derek just drops this thing on a dime. Late hands, DB's hands are all over him trying to bat that ball down. Phenomenal catch. And then you, when you roll on your back, you, you prevent the ground from knocking the ball out. It's a big time play. Great route discipline by Xavier. Really was. I mean, there's, there's, an, there's, an, uh, there's an art uh, to this. <laughs> watch, watch Justice at right tackle again. Louis Juan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's, that's great, great protection, guys straining. But here's that nuance of that route again. That's, that's called throwing them open because it, 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 don't, it don't look open. But for that to, for that to turn into a touchdown, that's, that's very encouraging. And, again, great confidence for Restrepo. We see him do it all offseason. Then a linebacker. I you know, just want to mention a linebacker, uh, a couple of the young guys that went in there. And this is really the first play of the game, um, you know, with, with um, Keontre Smith just – his quickness right here and what he's able to do, um, making this tackle, um, just watch, watch the pulling guard try to pull for him. Just boom, just that quickness. That's what we talk about, speed at linebacker, being able to slip that block, make the tackle, and just gets everybody excited, fire up, everybody else comes in and finishes. You know, just, just an immense play. And maybe that's 330 leaning on him. That's 330 oh, yeah. pounds, right? No, that's, there's no doubt, but, but speed of, of movement. And then this is a, a phenomenal play right here by Corey Flagg. So you see Corey... Number 11, the linebacker, they try to run a sweep. This is what we talk about, speed of foot, speed of thought, you know, and same thing. He gets a great job. Amari Smith, or Amari uh, Carter, rather, watch Amari set a great edge right there on the running back. And then Corey getting in the alley, and that's to me where, where middle linebackers have got to be able to make plays. You see, again, we're back out of the pro numbers. If you if you got guys at DBs and strikers at set edges, you got Mike linebackers who runs a great right shoulder tackle, rolls on his back and secures it. And Manny, you can study film as much as you want, but that's, there's instincts involved in him reacting to that football. That's the truth. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and, and he made a great play there. And then really, this is just the next play. And this is going to be a blitz. And you see Takori Couch coming clean on the blitz. Well, Keontre Smith, number four, behind him, he's blitzing as well. But Keontre, if the running back flares, Keontre's job is to peel on the running back. So this is a crucial third down. So the protection turns away from Takori. So Takori's free which means the quarterback has to throw it hot to the running back. So Keontre sees the back hop out. He come, pulls out of the blitz. And now, not only does he you know, do a good job, he's able to secure the tackle, gets him on the ground, trying to rip out of that football. That's a big third down stop. Um, this was after the, uh, uh, when we turned the ball over, defense went out there, got a three and out, held him to three, which is you know, a great sudden change stop. 
Overall, defensively, the reaction time on plays like that is not just something that happens at practice. That's something that's built into these guys, but you rep it and rep it and rep it. Yeah, and that's why I talk about speed of instinct, which is, you know, guys have instincts, they see it, that is where the repetition in practice comes. And then speed of foot. I mean, just having fast guys, fast guys go places faster. <laughs> so, uh, so those guys did a nice job. We still, you know, have the depth to keep them fresh throughout the game, and I think that's a big benefit to our defense. That does it for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. With U Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty, wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your healthcare needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. The joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. It occurred in the third quarter by maximum protection. De'Ara King finds Xavier Restrepo for a touchdown in the third quarter. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, Restrepo makes a wonderful adjustment and lands in the end zone. Perfect pass, perfect catch, perfect play. Back on the Manning Diaz Show, Joe Gacky, Don Bailey Jr. This weekend, the Hurricanes are home at Hard Rock Stadium, the home opener against Appalachian State. Mountaineers come in, the very good team, coming off a good win against East Carolina, Don. And with all of Miami's young players, I think this will give us a much better view of where the Hurricanes are because this uh, App State team, very experienced, and they've won a lot of games over the years. Yeah, there's no way that you can underestimate App State. They're a football team that is old, they're fast, they're experienced, and they're winners, Joe. They've won as many football games as anybody in the country the last five years, and they've done it with different coaches. Basically, the thing that has been successful for them is they've kept the system the same, the running system, the offensive system. A lot of it has is, is basically been duplicated from coach to coach. But Chase Bryce, we have to remember, this quarterback was heavily recruited and signed by Clemson. He was there for three years. He came in and won football games. The knock on him was when he was at Duke. He was through the most interceptions as anybody in the country last year, or more than anybody in the country. It didn't work out for them there. And then when I watched him in the East Carolina game uh, last week, he looked like a million dollars. It, it did not look anything like the guy that I had seen in the past. And they have built the offense around him, and they have made it where he can throw high percentage throws, and they're just looking for the completion. For Miami, young players. We saw young players, Restrepo, Keyshawn Smith, Cam Kitchens, James Williams, uh, we saw some young players step in and they're going to have to continue uh, playing at a high level. You and I have seen that happen over the years. Heck, it happened to me when I, 100 years ago. When you get in a big game like that as a young guy and it's not too big for you, it stays with you the rest of your career. And what I mean by that is take Restrepo. He's never going to be really on a stage again that early where he can come up with a play like that. You just look at the way he stands up after he catches the, the pass and the confidence that comes out of him. Now, we've seen it and everybody's seen it at practice, but he looks like he's done it a hundred times. That confidence bleeds through every single person in this entire team, and he's, he earned that touchdown. He earned it every day in practice, he earned it in the weight room, and that wasn't an accident and it wasn't a fluke. We're gonna see that many, many times. Cam Kitchens came in the game, he made some nice plays. All right, so moving forward, the Hurricanes have App State coming in, but also Miami has a bunch of home games here in September and October, leading into the first conference game against Virginia. This schedule sets up for the University of Miami to gain some traction, play at home, and get some momentum. You have to remember when you look at this schedule, okay, Miami lost to Alabama, but you've got App State, Michigan State, Connecticut State, Virginia, and then it's a whole slate of the ACC. Miami is in a position now to accomplish what they need to try to accomplish every single year, and that is win 
our side of the conference and go to the conference championship game. Everything right now is still in front of us. Michigan State has a bunch of new players. They got off to a great start the other night against Northwestern. They have the running back Kenneth Walker who transferred in from Wake Forest and by a quirk of the schedule, Virginia is coming to Hard Rock Stadium for the third straight year. That's good. We welcome them here. We don't have much luck up there, but you go to the Virginia game. One thing for our, our ticket holders is that night we're going to honor Coach Howard Schnellenberger and have a celebration of life for him uh, at halftime for that. So that's a great reason to come to that game, but it's also the beginning of the ACC. All right, so perhaps a, a real positive run will begin for the University of Miami starting this weekend, Saturday, against Appalachian State. 7 o'clock kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium, and we will continue on the show right after this. Hello, I'm the Good Greek Spiro, and I have some very exciting news. Good Greek Moving and Storage is launching our Welcome Home program. Book your next move with Good Greek, and you will receive our housewarming package, which includes gift cards valued at over $1,000, along with a neighborhood guide as you discover your new favorite local businesses. For the best move ever, and to receive your exclusive gift offer, visit goodgreek.com and welcome home. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. All right, welcome back to the show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., Hurricanes, and the Mountaineers of App State on Saturday at 7 o'clock in front of the home fans. Home, sweet home. That will be nice for the University of Miami. You touched on Chase Bryce last year for Duke. He was 20 for 25, but for like 85 yards. Right. Now, there is a reason he's been with three different teams. They're not getting along that well with David Cutcliffe a year ago. But Miami does have to put the game on his shoulders. He has to stop the run, put the game on his shoulders. And, and really, let's go back to what you said, stop the run. When you're dealing with App State, everything comes off the run. If they're going to go for a big play, which you see right here, it's off the run action. They want to make sure that they have everybody in the back half of a defense involved in trying to slow down the running game. Right here, you see beautiful accuracy. But the, the blessing for him is that he's got experienced guys at the wide receiver spot. There's a bunch of guys that are six-year players that have been there forever. They've caught a lot of passes, but he came in, Chase Bryce, and what he did was he formed a chemistry with an experienced group. But you can also see everything is off-run action. Two 100-yard rushers in their first game against East Carolina. Now, Cameron Peoples led the Sun Belt in rushing a year ago. They run the ball so well that they lead the nation in terms of consecutive years with a thousand yard rusher. Nine straight years, they've had a thousand yard rusher. Two went for 100 yards last week. Uh, Noel is from Northwestern High School. Well, when you go back to Peoples in the bowl game to end last year, <laughs> all he did was rush for 317 yards. But see, you watch this here. He's got great vision. Now, the speed is what you need, but they just rep these the outside zones so many times in practice, they just fall into place. Now, Coach Diaz told us uh, earlier in the show about how experienced their offensive line is. Those guys have been together. They're a unit. It works in unison, and when you're running this play, it kind of reminds me, this is his own play, it kind of reminds me of what the Packers did with the toss sweep, Joe. They just ran it again and again and again, and they mastered it, and everything falls off of that run play. Well, the best way to stop one of those zone plays, right, is get great penetration. University of Miami has uh, uh, some young linebackers, which we have saw last week, able to get into those gaps. Penetration, you get into the backfield, and the uh, next thing that can happen is Take the ball away. <laughs> that, that helps the most. Get that chain broken out, but also the way to stop that is keep pushing it to the sideline. And if you're on the back side of that play, you need to make sure that you're in position because the thing is everybody thinks it goes to the outside, but they're always looking for that cutback. All right, well, if you force turnovers for the University of Miami, that generally does lead to a big momentum switch. It does lead to the turnover chain. We've got a new turnover chain, by the way, uh, this year. And uh, oh, there it is. How about that? The turnover chain this year is uh, the helmet, the iconic University of Miami helmet. You know, some people have strong feelings about the chain. One thing that it does do for Miami, you know, it th 
over the last couple of years, Miami's one of the top five teams in taking the ball away. Statistically, that's a proven fact. Since the chain has arrived, Miami has improved the t in their takeaway category. Unfortunately, Miami didn't get enough of those against uh, the University of Alabama, but I anticipate that you will see the opportunity come up against App State. Well, if you got a chain, then you got to have a ring as well. We also <laughs> have rings. We have chains and we have rings. So uh, we'll take a look at the ring this year. There you University go. Of Miami. How about that? I like to see how way the way it comes together, Joe. See the. They split the A down the middle to create the word Miami. So we have the chains, we have the rings, and you get in the end zone, you get yourself a nice ring for the University of Miami. All right, so when we come back, uh, also still to come on the show, chains and rings, plus the keys of the game, all of that and much more as we continue. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. With U Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U-Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. Back on the show, Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr. And time now for the keys to the game. Miami and App State at Hard Rock Stadium, 7 o'clock kickoff. I call the first one the two E's, match App State's energy and emotion because they're coming in with a chip on their shoulder, so match their energy and emotion. Miami coming off the tough loss to Alabama. When you play App State, you've got to be able to stuff the run. And then the Hurricanes want to keep their offense on the field, do a better job with third down conversions. Stay on the field for the University of Miami. All right, so match App State's energy and emotion. Joe, I think that's going to be easy. Miami's at, at Hard Rock Stadium. You haven't didn't play in front of anybody last year. The, there's going to be a, a, a full house. Let's hope. Let's hope everybody comes out and support it. They're going to run through the smoke. I think that they're going to have to be worried about our energy okay. because these young men put a lot into that football game against Alabama. They're glad to be home. They're glad to be playing. And there's only one way to get over the Alabama loss, and that's a win. Now, you know, the Mountaineers have a lot of players uh, on their roster from South Florida. So if they're thinking, hey, I should be on your sideline, that, right. that generally leads to that chip on the shoulder type of thing. Okay, the uh, second key to the game, I think really the most important one, the foundation for App State is running the football. Scott Satterfield did it when he was there. He's still doing it at Louisville. The head coach for App State was the offensive line coach for Scott Satterfield. They run this play over and over. They do, but the good news is Coach Diaz explained to us, and we saw last week against Alabama, is the number of defensive linemen Miami has available to put in a ball game. I think when you look at that, it keeps your energy at a high level. It keeps you from getting tired and worn down. And App State does not have the depth that, that, that they need to keep pouring it on Miami. Miami defensively, that front seven, it's going to be a long day for them unless they, unless they figure out how to shut down that running play. When they do that, then the skies may open for the Hurricanes. Okay, a big thing for the University of Miami, big key in this one. Uh, struggled a little bit, but you saw when Miami converted their third downs against Alabama how that offense starts to click. And so uh, success leads to success. Positive plays lead to more positive results. Miami's got to stay on the field and convert their third downs. Well, if you go back and you look, and I'm going to be off a little bit, the time of possession in the first quarter, I think, was Alabama was at about 10 minutes. Miami was at about 5. Miami had only 22 for the game. <laughs> That's right. 22 minutes for the game. So, and, and a huge portion of that in the first quarter was, uh, was upside down for Miami. So they've got to get the first downs. And if you talk to Coach Lashley, he'll tell you time and time again, he wants to have drives that continue to get first downs. His goal is to at least get one first down on the, each drive. And that way, it gives your defense time to rest, but it also will put more pressure on the, on the defense. I think they showed they had some third down makers. Keyshawn oh. Smith made a nice play. Restrepo can be a third down guy. And of course, we did see Derrick King run on third down, which is one of his fortes. 
Well, I think that as time goes by, you're going to see De'Eric King become more comfortable running the football again. We have to remember, he's eight months off of major surgery. So he's kind of finding himself again, too, how he is physically. Because he wasn't touched in the spring, he wasn't touched in the fall. He goes into a game against Alabama, and it's live, live, live. I mean, with big, strong guys coming after you, I think you'll see an even more comfortable De'Eric King. And what he'll, you'll, he'll do is he'll elaborate in this offense, and you'll see him involved heavily in the running game. Miami and Appalachian State Saturday, 7 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover, too. Good Greek, moving in storage. Your superhero movers. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. All right, time for one of our favorite segments, Rings and chains. We'll take a look at a couple of topics. We'll decide if it's going to be a ring or a chain. Are you ready? I'm ready, Joe. All right, here comes uh, the first question for Miami and App State. Offense and defense. The offense scores a touchdown first, or the defense records a sack first. Now, some of that could depend on the coin toss. <laughs> it could, but I'm going to go with the offense scores a TD first because I believe App State's going to come out and run that football time and time again. So it'll be hard to return. It's hard to get a sack if they're running the ball. Okay, I'm going to go ring as well. I think the the Hurricanes will score a touchdown first before they get their first sack because I think this time they're going to win the coin toss and elect to receive and march it right down the field. All right, here comes the uh, the second one: ring or chain. The offense scores more touchdowns in the first quarter. The defense forces more turnovers in the first half. Hmm. I'd like to have the turnovers, but I think it's going to be the touchdowns. I'm going with the rings again. I think it's the offense. I'm going to go uh, chain on this mm, one. Good. I'm chain. I'm going to go chains on this one because the offense would have to score. Look at that chain. It looks pretty good. I like it. would have to score twice in the first quarter. I think Miami will get two, two um, takeaways in the first half. I think they will get Chase Bryce. I think, you know, sometimes you go up against an opponent where you get into their head. You have their number, and I think Miami might have the number of Chase Bryce. Now, this last one could very much determine which way the game goes. Mm -hmm. The offense converts more third downs, or the defense has more tackles for losses. Now, the Hurricanes defense averages about traditionally – about nine tackles for a loss per game. Correct. I'm going with the defense has more tackles for loss. I think they're going to be amped up, and this defense is going to, it, it's got to make up some ground from what happened last week. I think they're going to be inspired. If I go more third down conversions, that means they're converting about nine third downs in this game. <laughs> that would be an easy win. So I'm going to go with the rings. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to say Miami has a, a solution the third down defense of uh, Appalachian State, and I'm going to go rings, and I'm going to say uh, it's a big day for the Miami offense. I hope you're right. It works either way for us. It's going to be a hard-fought uh, game. Mm. Appalachian State coming in with a bit of a chip on their shoulder. For Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz and Don Bailey Jr., I am Joe Zagacki. We will see you next time here on the Manny Diaz Show. If you train like a pro then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. 
We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover, too. Good Greek, moving in storage. Your superhero movers, 